and then uh, I'll give a short presentation around uh, the scheme and how it works. And then I'm going to invite Russell Smith from Retrofit Works to um, to talk about the scheme and and talk about uh, his his uh, organisation and what they do in their part in the scheme. Uh, and they're the main partners who are going to be doing a lot of the delivery around it. Um, and then we're going to have uh, around about half an hour or so for question and answers uh, and answer any questions you have, any concerns you might have about the scheme, um, and so we can clarify things for you. And then we'll have a quick interactive quiz at the end so we can put your knowledge to the test. Um, so uh, the first poll is going to be starting now. So we're going to be, um, there should be a link in the chat that's gone there. Uh, and if you uh, click on that link, it'll take you to a website called Slido. Um, and uh, if you go along there and enter the code WANDGHG, so that's WAND GHG, you can access the poll. Um, if you've got your phone with you uh, and you find that easier, you can bring it up on the browser on your phone. Very, very simple to, to, to do this. Um, go to slido.com, enter the, the hashtag WAND GHG, that's W A N D G H G. Or alternatively, what you can do is you can hover, if you've got a QR scanner on your phone, you can hover it over the screen and uh, it will take you straight to the website. Um, isn't technology wonderful? Um, so I'm sure many of you have used um, the QR code for um, stuff like um, logging in and registering when you're going to uh, restaurants or pubs and other venues and stuff like that in the last year. So um, if you want to use it that way, that's fine. And there we are. And I assume we've got some people there, Amy. Um, so my colleague Amy is sharing his screen. Um, so you can still see the QR code. You can still see how to join. If you haven't gone there, then please do. Um, and uh, you can that and we're going to start the survey in just a moment. So ah, here it is. It's come up now. Um, so do you think you are eligible for the Green Homes Grant Local Authority Delivery Scheme? So you can click on yes, no or unsure. So if you can answer that, please. If you do have any issues around getting onto Slido, please just let us know because uh, we've not used it before in this one. Uh, Carol? What was the code again, please? It's W A N D G H G. OK. Uh, so I think everyone's answered the questions. We're just going to do the, the answers at the end. Uh, so how much do you know about the scheme? Do you know a lot? Do you know a little or do you know nothing at all? So how much do you know about the Green Homes Grant Local Authority Delivery Scheme? Uh, and it's fine if you know nothing at all. That's why we're here tonight. And how did you find out about this event? Did you receive a letter? Uh, was it online through social media? Was it online via a Google search? Was it word of mouth through a newsletter or some other way? So how did you find out about this event? And that'd be very useful for us to know sort of how people are finding out about these things when they come along uh, and, and will help us sort of shape what we do in the future. OK. And what would you like this event to cover? So what would you like this event to cover? What are the main things that you're looking for out of this event? And then finally, would you be interested in keeping up to date on ones with action on climate change and attending future events? Uh, so if yes, please leave your email address for a newsletter below. So that's on Slido uh, rather than in the chat on the on the teams, because otherwise everyone will be able to see it. But if you put it into the into Slido, then uh, we'll be able to see it, uh, but no one else will. And so then we can add you to our um, to our distribution list for our um, 
uh, climate change newsletter, which will tell you all about anything else that, that we're doing uh, in the future. We've been doing um, some climate conversations where we're talking about different aspects of climate change. And also we've had the previously in November, we had the, the a week on climate summit as well and we're planning more events that, that are similar to, to get people talking about climate change and get more knowledge out there amongst people so people can know what they're talking about and know how to take action on it as well so if you do want to know a bit more then leave your email address okay great um thank you very much so yeah, so my colleague Annalisa has just put uh, in the chat that all the responses are anonymous. So you'll see the questions um, when you log on here, but your um, your responses won't be visible to others. So just to let you know. OK, well, thank you very much for that. Um, that's really good to know. Uh, and now we're going to move on to the presentations. Um, so I'm just going to bring up my presentation really quickly. And I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Okay. So hopefully everyone can see can see this now. Um, and I'll begin. So as I said before, uh, my name's Andrew Hager. I'm Policy Review Manager here at Wandsworth Council. Um, and uh, one of my roles is is working on climate change for Wandsworth. Um, and part of that is um, this Green Homes Grant. Um, so what is the Green Homes Grant? So uh, this is funding that's been provided to local councils by central government. So it's by um, BAES, the Department for Energy and Industrial Strategy. Uh, and so the Green Homes Grant is funded to support the retrofit of uh, homes. Uh, and so we've secured this funding so we can deliver energy efficiency and low carbon heating for over 120 homes across the borough. So we're really pleased to have got this funding because um, we think it's really, really important that homes uh, have retrofit, that homes are able to have low carbon heating and reduce their, their heating bills. So why should you be interested? Well, simply, you can get £10,000 worth of improvements for your home if you meet the criteria and you don't have to pay anything. Um, so these improvements can make your home warmer and they can reduce your energy bills as well. Uh, and so you can have um, low carbon heating solutions installed, heat pumps, solar thermal, um, you can have windows installed. Um, we'll go into more detail around exactly what, what they are and what the benefits are of these different things. So um, you can reduce your heating bills, make your home warmer, much more comfortable. And also the important thing here is that also to, to know that using less energy can also help reduce your carbon emissions as well as lowering your um, as well as lowering your bills. So th and that's really important as a key thing that we're trying to do um, as a council is trying to support people in reducing their carbon emissions. So who is eligible? So it needs to be clear that the, the Green Homes Grant is targeted at those who are most in need. So maybe struggling with their fuel bills because um, they their houses aren't very energy efficient or their income is low or or that they their homes are cold and they're not very energy efficient um so the, to be eligible you need to either be um, an own occupier or a private landlord the household income must be under thirty thousand pounds a year the property must have an epc rating that's an energy performance certificate rating of a d e f or g and those are the four lowest ratings and that you can get so ABC is is the top and DEF or G are the lower ones and so you, the, your ho your home needs to be in that and you need to be having uh, needs to be willing to have the work done to your property as well and that's obviously really important because if you're signing up and come through it and then actually you don't really want this then um, that's not great so um, if you do if you need to be willing to have the work done um, so we've already contacted quite a few people. I think we've contacted um, over one and a half thousand residents, um, uh, sent letters to them to, to let them know that we think they are probably eligible. Um, but if you think you are, if you haven't received the letter and you think you are, then you can uh, email us at, us, uh, uh, at greenhomesgrant at wandsworth.gov.uk 
or you can go to wandsworth.gov.uk forward slash ghg. So uh, what can you have installed? Um, and, and I think this is what probably what a lot of people are, are thinking about. Um, so you can have insulation installed. So you can have external wall insulation, internal wall, cavity, roof insulation, or a combination of all the different types of insulation. Um, and, and insulation is really, really important uh, to, to make sure that you're just using a lot less energy and that your home is much, much warmer. You can also have air source heat pumps. So uh, these use electricity to transfer heat from one place to another and to heat water. So it's a little bit like a fridge uh, in reverse, the same kind of principle. Um, you can have double glazed windows installed and this reduces heat loss and also cuts drafts as well. You can have solar PV, so that's um, photovoltaic. So those are solar panels on your roof that produce electricity for you to use. Also, things like heating controls can be really important. You can have better control of the temperature of your home and you use less energy. So you can specify that a certain area of the home is one temperature at one time and another area of the home is a different temperature at another time. And you can really effectively use the energy um, to heat your home properly um, and, and to make the best use of it. And there's also solar thermal as well, which um, works in a similar way to solar panels, but instead of providing electricity, it heats water for you. So I do want to stress that you cannot have a gas boiler replaced by a new gas boiler using this scheme. The whole idea behind this scheme is not just around energy efficiency, but it's about reducing carbon emissions. And gas boilers use fossil fuels, which are one of the major sources of um, greenhouse gases, which contributes to climate change. So you cannot have a gas boiler replaced by a new gas boiler. You can have a gas boiler replaced by potentially heat pump, um, but not by another gas boiler. So how can you apply for funding? Well, you can ask for an application form to be sent to you, or you can use the online form that's on the Wandsworth website. So again, if you email greenhomesgrant at wandsworth.gov.uk, um, we have somebody who checks that, that inbox uh, multiple times a day. So your email will be read, will be seen, will be replied to very, very quickly um, if you need a, an, an applica application form sent to you. Or you can go on to wandsworth.gov.uk the UK forward slash GHG and we have uh, an online application form there that you can fill in. Um, it is it's pretty simple step by step process there. So what information do you need in order to apply? Well, we do need to check that you meet the criteria that we set up by central government and that's really important. It's a condition of the money that we've been given that we have to check that people are genuinely ed eligible for this. So we need to check that your property is an EPC, D, E, F or G. And we can look this up for you if you don't know how to do it, you haven't been able to find it out. Um, that's fine, we, we, we can do that for you. Uh, and also, if you're already in receipt of some benefits from the council or some other ones, then we can, uh, we can see if we've got a record of you and we can check quickly to verify your income level if we already hold some of that information on you as the council. Uh, if you don't have a record, then you will need to send some evidence of your income. So this can be wage slips or three months of bank statements. And all this is explained on the application form, uh, either so if you are emailed it or if you sent a, a hard copy or on the online form as well. So another thing I do want to say and do want to point out is that our scheme that we're doing in Wandsworth is not the same as the government's Green Homes Grant Voucher Scheme. So you might have heard that the government's Green Homes Grant Voucher Scheme has now closed and there's been some negative publicity around it, negative news stories, things like that. Um, and I just want to stress that we are offering a different scheme. It's targeted locally for those that um, cannot necessarily afford to pay for energy efficiency improvements. Um, and also that we have a delivery partner, Retrofit Works, and Russell's here on the call and, and should be able to, to speak to you uh, shortly. Um, they're based in Wandsworth, so they know the area and they, they, know, they know what they're doing around Retrofit. They've got an awful lot of experience in doing this. So they will organise everything for you and, and make it much, much easier for you to get improvements done. So they'll arrange for somebody to come around to do the um, survey on your house to have a look inside to see what measures you can have installed, what are the best options for you in terms of improving the energy efficiency and reducing your bills and reducing the carbon emissions from your, from your home. 
uh, and then they'll arrange to get quotes done from contractors and then they'll arrange for the contractors to come in to do the work in your home. So they will be arranging an awful lot of that, um, the stuff that normally you would have to sort out and it's a bit of a headache and it can be a bit stressful to, to arrange all these sorts of things. Retrofit Works will do all that um, for you. Um, and so basically we've already received the funding from the government It's sitting in our council bank account and it's there ready to be spent on improvements on your home. So if you're eligible, please do, do get in touch, do let us know because it's there waiting to be used. Um, yeah, it's best to take advantage of it if you can. So if you rent your home, is this a problem? Well, no. So. Wandsworth's Green Homes Grant Scheme is open to those who privately rent their home. So landlords are not eligible for the full £10,000, but they can access up to £5,000 for improvements. Um, and they'll still be able to take advantage of the easier route to access improvements via retrofit works. So if you do rent your home, uh, if you're a, a private tenant, pass this information on to your landlord. We still need to check the household income and the EPC rating and the landlord um, must pay at least a third of the cost of improvements. They still will have to pay something, but it's going to be a, a lot lower than if they weren't taking advantage of this scheme. Uh, I need to stress that if you socially rent your home, then you're not eligible for this scheme. This is only for private, um, private rented sector. OK, and so next steps. Um, so if we contact you, then please, please do respond. Do let us know if you are if you're interested in applying. And if you think you're eligible, but we haven't contacted you, get in touch with us. And if you can't take part yourself in the scheme, but you think that other people you know might be, please do tell them about it. Um, it's really important that we try to get as many people through um, through the scheme and, and, and get improvements made to people's homes to improve energy efficiency. So um, yeah, please do share with friends, family, other people you think might be eligible for this. Um, so you can email greenhomesgrant at wandsworth.gov.uk uh, or you can go to wandsworth.gov.uk forward slash ghg. Okay, and that's it from me for now. Okay. Right, and we have Russell here now. Russell's on screen. Um, so I was just going to hand over to Russell. Um, and um, I think if you could provide a bit more around sort of what people could expect uh, when they sign up and when they uh, find out they're eligible and, and find out that they um, they can get the funding, sort of what happens next? Oh, you're on mute, Russell. I can hear me now. Yes, yes. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, yeah, hi, everybody. Um, so I, I'll just take you through the process. Uh, I'll just explain a bit about Retrofit Works, first of all. Uh, Retrofit Works is a not for profit cooperative, and we are based in Wandsworth. Um, the point about having a cooperative do this is that we bring together the people that are expert in their field to, to do their thing well. Um, and the first part of that journey will be to come to the property, to assess the property. Um, we will get involved once your eligibility has been uh, established. So any personal details, um, th those are the sort of things that will be dealt with between you and the, the local authority. Um, we, we won't see any of that. We, we are there to look at, the, at, the, at your building. Um, as has uh, been quite rightly pointed out in the chat, um, if you don't know what your EPC rating is, obviously that's one of the eligibility criteria for this, you know, whether it's a D rating or below. Um, if you don't know, we will carry out an energy performance certificate for your property. Now, we've got some quite clever software that, all, that has a, gives us a very good idea of whether you have the right rating before we've met you. Um, but um, nonetheless, we'll come to the property, we'll do a detailed uh, survey, and we will carry out what we call a whole house plan. So what we like to be able to do is to tell you what uh, what the best things are for your property, irrespective of this scheme, you'll have a nice report <clears throat> that tells you all the things that you'll need to do with your property to get to zero carbon, to get your bills very low. And at the top of that, the top of the shop, there'll be a phase which we'll say, we'll show you what we, we can pay for in this scheme. There'll be other things later on underneath that um, that, that you, you can go on to do yourself or if other schemes come up through the local authority later, those are things that you'll be able to, to, to access. Uh, but 
we we think it, and the feedback we've had so far is it's a really awesome piece of a piece of work, and it really helps you to get your head around the things that you'll need to do over the next thirty years or so, um, or what we 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 will need to do as a country to get to zero carbon. So that's the start of the journey. We we think that's really useful, irrespective. Um, um, but clearly, at the top of that is the things that Andrew's already outlined, the things that we'll be able to pay for through the scheme. And to reiterate, a lot of people are very keen to try and get a, an old gas boiler replaced. We can do that, but only if it's with electrical heating through the, through the, the form of, of an air source heat pump. To give you an idea of technologies that you, uh, that, that so it's that, it's insulation. Um, we, we, we do <clears throat> try to make sure we can put ventilation measures into the property as well, but they have to be accompanied with insulation. So insulation is important because it's reducing your need for heat. A lot of people jump to the heating system itself, which is it's fine if it's if it's a bit um, uh, a bit temperamental um, and it's very, very old. Uh, clearly, we'll look at that as a, as a measure that we'll try and, uh, and deal with. But we have to, because of the rules of the scheme, uh, replace any uh, gas boilers with an air source heat pump. Heat pump. Um, and those will only work well if you've got a, a property that is is very is very well insulated. Um, um, so we will assess all of that. So you won't we won't be recommending any measures that are um, are not going to be compatible with the way you live in the house and what the property really needs. Please bear in mind that some properties just simply can't have an air source heat pump. Um, for instance, if you've got a flat. And it doesn't have a balcony and there's nowhere to put a, a heat pump which, which has to go outside the building nearby we have to look at other options for your property um so we might be focused on insulation uh windows that kind of thing, window replacement that kind of thing um uh, also if you're in a terrace property um it is possible to install an air source heat pump but quite tricky um so our, our assessors are trained to identify those particular situations but predominantly, we're looking to try and do this, the smart thing for you uh, to maximise the spend of the grant uh, for your work. And it will be reducing the need for it, heat with insulation. Um, and uh, if we can uh, try and replace the heating system with something that's, uh, that's 21st century. Um, um, so that, that those are the bare bones. So the assessment, the assessment then we'll, we'll take that. We'll go to our suppliers. So we've vetted a whole bunch of local contractors that can do this work. Uh, they're members of our co-op. They wouldn't be members of the co-op unless they've been vetted and they have all the prerequisite requirements that the government has set down for this scheme. Um, so they are trust, they're also externally verified by Trustmark. Retrofit Works itself is, is what we call a Trustmark scheme. So all of the processes that you'll go through, we are externally audited by the Trustmark scheme in order uh, for, for us to be verified in that way. So um, they, all, they audit a certain number of these properties as, as well and make sure that we do our job properly. The person that will be appointed to you to take go through this process will be the person that does the initial assessment. They're called a retrofit coordinator. Um, they are they're quite geeky on the energy side. They, they, they really know their stuff uh, and they're impartial. So they don't have any formal relationship with the contractor. So they're your person. They will be representing you and they will make sure the contractor is, uh, is giving us a good quote. Uh, and we they'll be pr uh, making a proposal which is technically the right thing for you. Um, whereas under the Green Homes Grant voucher system scheme you might have read about, the contractor is completely in charge and they're telling you what they want to do to your house. I don't like that. We don't like that. You're getting an impartial view to make sure it's the right answer for your property. And they will oversee the work through the process to make sure that what you're getting is actually a high quality install. And if we don't like it, we won't pay them uh, and we will not pay them until they put it right. And if they don't put it right, we'll get someone else in that will and we'll pay them. Um, so uh, it's it's much more than just uh, making sure you've got consumer protection. We're actually going to get the job done right in the first place. Uh, and you're, at the end of it, when it is done right, you'll get guarantees and warranties put in place that you can um, have uh, for on, on record so that when you sell the property or the landlord sells the property at a later date, they're all there on record so that it can be passed on to the next owner as well. Um, <clears throat> so we think um, We've, uh, we've we've got this process pretty nailed now. We've we've renovated to, in this way over two and a half thousand properties uh, in London in the last two years uh, using this process. Uh, we're now uh, working with Richmond Council uh, and a number of other councils in the similar scheme across London now using this process. And we always try and make sure we use contractors that are very local to the to to to, to the to your to your property as well, so that they've got a stake in this as well because you you know where to find them if, if they don't do well. And that usually make sure that we've got a really good reputation for the work that we do. Um, 
so yeah, I think Andrew, I think that was pretty much all that I, I wanted to, to cover in the detail. I think some of this is is, a, is about asking people on the call whether they've got any specific questions you know, on the technical side. Uh, they can put in the chat or ask us a question now, and I can I can answer any question. Yep, that'd be great. Um, so um, I think open it up to to the people that are here and mm -hmm. and any questions that they have. Cool. Right. Oh, so uh, there was um, Eleanor who asked around, um, is it possible to replace very old double glazed windows 30 odd years, uh, 30 plus years, um, mm -hmm. uh, which allow the heat to escape? Um, can that be replaced under this scheme? It, they can, yeah. And but as I say, uh, we're back to my earlier comment about the, the whole house assessment. Uh, if uh, there are other things that we think are possibly better value for money for you, our assessment will identify those. So we don't jump straight to double glazing. Um, uh, to give you an interesting fact, um, if you replace single glazing uh, with double glazing, uh, it will take about 90 years to pay for itself in economic terms. Uh, the double glazing salesman don't tell you that. Um, it's a big uh, saving, but it's also a very big cost. So if you compare the cost with the saving, it's in simple economic payback terms, it's about a 90 year payback. If you've got double glazing, do you think that payback is going to get longer or shorter? Uh, it's going to get longer, I'm afraid. So uh, your your economic payback of double glazing, if replaced with double glazing, is probably about 250 years. Uh, and uh, I, we will demonstrate that in the in the report that we get, gets carried out for your property. So uh, if we were to compare that with something like solid wall insulation, for instance, which if you've got an older Victorian property, is it, it can be a bit disruptive. But with our impartial person overseeing the contractor that knows what they're doing, it's not as disruptive as you might think. Um, the insulation, even though it feels a pain in the bum, actually will pay back a lot quicker than than replacing old double glazing with new double glazing. Uh, and the scheme, as a scheme, we, we like to do that kind of work because it, it's really making that house fit for the future. Uh, but if you've got double, if you've got old double glazing that's frankly falling out, you like to keep the burglars out, and uh, then then that's quite a priority for you, right? So that's the discussion you can have with the, with the retrofit coordinator. But to answer your question, and I've done it in a very roundabout way, yes, we can. <laughs> um, uh, the other question, Eleanor, answered Andrew, I, I, I've seen: Is it possible to insulate under Victorian wooden floors? Absolutely. Um, and um, there are two techniques. Um, Having uh, insulated a lot of them over the years, two techniques. One is that we can lift the floorboards up, insulate from the top. Um, however, <clears throat> you'll be pleased to hear that there's a wonderful company that uh, are our next door neighbours in Wandsworth. Um, if it's very uh, easy for us to get a, a robot under the floor, we will, and you can drive it around and it'll spray your floor from below. Uh, it's a company called Cubot, good friends of ours. Uh, they're, they're with us just based behind Flip Out on, uh, on Garrett Lane. And they will do uh, that, that work as well. But we have to find a nice way of getting that under the under the floor. And usually where you've got some stairs uh, going up, you might be able to lift a couple of floorboards there. Or the, the, the robot uh, can get through uh, an air brick as well. Um, so there are, there are two options there, absolutely possible. And we will evaluate that option alongside double glazing, alongside all the other options you might have for your property and compare their, their costs and benefits. So we can, we can choose together what, what might be best for you. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Russell. Um, so when we were doing the, the quiz at the start um, and we were asking people some questions, uh, one of the things that, that people asked they wanted the, the, um, that this session to cover um, was around uh, the works being COVID secure. Um, and I was wondering, Russell, if, if you could just explain a bit more about what sort of protocols and, and oh, things yeah. are in place, just to reassure yep. people who, who, are, who are worried about that sort of thing, which is perfectly understandable. Oh, yeah, yeah, given yeah everything yeah well uh, as you might imagine from february 2020 this has occupied most of my life um and the, we've actually invested a huge amount of time and effort in putting together the processes to, to give people comfort um so even the the surveyor that will come to your property i mean I've, I've been having quite a lot of work done on my own property in the last uh sort of three or four months i moved moved house recently uh that was not a particularly covid secure experience i can tell you um but and, and most contractors or even surveyors that will come to a property these days, they stick a mask on and hope for the best. Not in my house, not in this, not in this scheme. So our surveyors will send you a questionnaire before we arrive. 
Uh, so it can all be done on email. This is not something that's particularly paper based, but if you're not conversant with email and you want this done uh, paper based, it can be done that way too. So don't feel excluded in any way because uh, you're, you're worried about electronics. Um, but we need to evaluate the situation, you know, what your particular, your personal vulnerability might be, or most importantly, the most vulnerable person in your house. Um, if they're shielding in any way, um, if they're susceptible, um, uh, uh, it, it, obviously you're probably aware COVID, uh, it, the, the risk uh, of, uh, of exposure to COVID is very much uh, proportional to the age, uh, the, the age of the eldest person in the property. So we would evaluate that. And that dictates how we will control the environment. So this applies to the contractors as well. If it's not, nothing's going to stop us basically, but it might be that you have to sit in the, you have to go and sit, sit under an umbrella in the garden for an hour while we do our survey. We always ask you to open all your doors and windows uh, uh, as when, when we, we when we are there, and certainly all your windows for at least 20 minutes before we are there too. What we found is that our our surveyors are often more nervous about this than you are, uh, because they could go into a number of properties in a day, and they are more likely to be exposed to this than than, than you are. So actually. Uh, being a bit selfish, we've done this mainly for them, not for you. Um, although you do get the benefit. Um, so there's a there's a survey, there's a risk assessment. We'll agree all the rules for how we'll we'll survey your home home before we, before we step into it. And we we have a lovely set of of of, of, of wet wipes that we'll make sure that if you've touched anything uh, as we leave the property, we'll wipe it when we leave the the, the, the place as well. All of our guys will be wearing uh, gloves. And we will dispose of those in, in, a, uh, in a in a responsible way as well uh, once we've left the property. So uh, hopefully uh, that that gives you some comfort. But obviously, when you see the documentation, if you don't like it, you don't have to say yes uh, to this. Uh, but I can assure you, it, I think you'll be quite impressed with the way we've, we've done. And that's just a survey. The, the contractors obviously will have the same level of rigor to the way we deal with uh, our activities in, in, in this as well. So um, the other thing to bear in mind is that we won't have more than two people from the contracting side in the property at any one time either. Obviously, the more people you have in a property, the more the risk goes up as well, and we'll deal with that in the same way. So uh, obviously, if you've had your injections, the risk levels go down. That's all part of our, our, our assessment process, um, and uh, it's all kept taken account of. The thing we always like to do as well is to make sure that even if you've um, got, if the contractor is not dealing with things in the right way, kick them out. Um, uh, speak to your retrofit coordinator, call our office. You'll have uh, contact with uh, our call centres, always always open at working hours, so you can call people out and ask if you think it's, if it's, they don't think it's right. Uh, uh, even before the contractors have arrived, if you don't think it's right, we won't go ahead with it. So this is, this is all that you are in control of this situation, but I can assure you we've had all the different variations of how this might go wrong thrown at us over the last year. And we, we think we've got processes now to handle everything. Um, so uh, hopefully that's got some comfort uh, for all of you guys. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Russell. Um, so we got um, some other questions that have come through. Um, and I think one of them is around um, <coughs> Sorry, I had it on my screen and it's now gone. Previous uh, applicants, maybe. Yeah, uh, that, that was around, um, does my roof need to be facing in one specific direction? Um, and I think this was referring to um, solar panels and, and um, some of solar panels. This got sent in sort of like um, when somebody joined up to the event. Oh, I see. Uh, OK, right. Um, yes, we, we will turn your entire house around 180 degrees to point the sun. Uh, no, I'm joking. Um, uh, not really. If, if solar panels are the thing that comes out top of the list in our evaluation, as I said, we have this evaluation. Solar panels is, is an option. Um, actually, you'll be quite surprised. I mean, clearly, facing north is a bad idea because uh, it will never see direct sunlight. But surprisingly, you will get some benefit from it. So if you see any any crackpots that have got a solar panel on their roof in your street facing north, uh, they're not going to get great benefit from it, but they will get some. But we will obviously evaluate the benefit of all the and actually our software does this. Uh, whatever roof uh, direction, uh, direction sorry, whatever, whichever direction your roof is pointing and whichever slope, whatever the slope is for your roof, and if you've got any trees nearby or from the shade, all of that is taken account of in our evaluation. So it will compare the amount of sunlight you will get uh, in your part uh, of London um, and all those factors I've just uh, given you. And obviously how much roof you've got is a factor as well. Um, uh, all of that will be take, taken account of. We'll compare the, the sunlight, the energy that's generated, 
the cost saving as a result of that, compare that with the cost of installing it and compare that with all the other things you could have with your property. So it's all the same. Um, so it, if you've got a flat roof, even if you put the, the solar panel flat, you're actually getting 90% efficiency compared to one that is perfect painting, uh, pointing in the perfect direction at 30 degrees towards south. So, you know, there's always that opportunity and solar panel costs are coming down all the time. Um, so it's always worth a consideration and, and that will be on the list. Brilliant. Uh, we had a question come through earlier um, around if you can still apply um, for this scheme if you've um, had uh, recent modifications or if you've been um, uh, if you've applied for the government's Green Homes grant voucher previously. So the answer to that is that if you've had a voucher under the government's uh, voucher scheme, and, and you've been given that voucher, then unfortunately you're not eligible for this scheme because basically you'll be benefiting twice from it. Um, so unfortunately you can't if you've been issued a voucher. If you've applied and you didn't actually get um, issued a voucher, then you can apply for this and that's fine. It's, it's only if you were, if you've been given that voucher and it's, that's been confirmed for you and that, that you're not eligible. But if you applied before, but you withdrew it or you didn't click send um, and it didn't get finalised, then actually you are eligible for this. So please do that's get probably the majority of the people that apply, to be fair. Well, yes. <laughs> And I did. I did say in the uh, in in the in the presentation. That I, and again, I'm going to stress it. Um, this is not the same as the government's one. There's been a lot of negative publicity, and they've now yeah. stopped it basically. Um, but we have the funding. We're ready to go. Um, so so please, if you're eligible, um, go through us because we can get work done for you. Um, I, I think it might be helpful to also talk about how long um, this process can take as well. So in terms mm -hmm. of um, getting the um, the form sent in to us. Um, normally, it's around about sort of a week or so um, to 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 turn that around to do the checks, and then we hand it over to Russell, who can then get on the on getting the the scheme. So, roughly, how long would that take, Russell? Yeah. So we we expect to have got your whole house plan done within a week. Um, what we try to do to minimise travel, because obviously we are trying to minimise how many, you know, how often our surveyors leave their prop their own house uh, under government guidelines. So we try to group surveys together, um, and um, uh, so we expect to turn that round in a week. So you, to get, at the end of that survey, they'll go home, they'll do the crunching, and they'll give you a call and we'll have a conversation about what your priorities are based on the list that we've got. Um, and then uh, if we're in agreement uh, about what we'll what we do, we go out to tender. Uh, we, we expect to get uh, quotes back from our contractors within a fortnight uh, and then uh, once we've, we, we've dealt with that and I've, if a fortnight seems a bit slow I apologise but there's actually a hell of a lot going on right now for uh, a relatively um, considering how much work we need to do in London to get our auto homes decarbonised in the next 30 years a relatively few contractors that do this kind of work at the moment by the way if you know any contractors that want to do this kind of work get them to give me a call uh, because <laughs> We, we can train them up and we can get them involved in this. Uh, I'm not joking, actually. We need 400,000 contractors, new people coming into this industry to, to decarbonise the UK. Um, uh, we will get those quotes, we'll get three quotes, and, um, and we will talk to you about those, what they're proposing, um, what sort of company they are. Uh, so you get a chance to choose, um, and we would expect to mobilise those within a couple of weeks of that. So from Andrew's week, our two weeks, another two weeks, we're probably expecting and probably four or five week turnaround to get everything done from start to finish. Obviously, uh, windows, but must be, the only, only different exception to that are windows. Windows can, do have a bit of a lead in time. Um, so we will, uh, the contractors ask for a deposit and there can often be, um, they're, they're saying six weeks at the moment uh, for, you know, once we, once we have a firm order with them for getting those manufactured and in. We've got a wonderful company over in Romford, so we couldn't get them any closer. They've got their own factory and they can turn them around really quite quickly, but they only do PVC windows. Um, and we, we don't like PVC is a little bit evil. It's not very environmentally friendly. So we try to do timber wherever we can. <clears throat> so that's where, where the, 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 the slower turnaround that happens. But if you need, desperately need windows, say if Eleanor's uh, windows are genuinely falling out completely and we need windows and we've only got a certain budget, then we might end up with PVC and we can get those done quickly. So we evaluate all the options, that's all I'm saying. <clears throat> that's great. Um, there's a question from David in the chat around air source heat pumps and whether they're noisy. If David, if you put your head right next to it and there's no other noise, yes, they're pretty noisy. However, 
if you're in your kitchen and it's outside, uh, I, I, I would bet you can't hear it at all. Um, so it, it's, these are things all relative. I, I mean, I, I bought a property that had, had happened to have one installed 10 years ago, and it is, it is quite noisy, I will admit, but the technology is pretty amazing now. Um, and um, you're not allowed to install one uh, through, you, if you use the, what we call the micro-generation certification scheme, there's protocols now that they deal with that test the, uh, the noise uh, levels of these, these bits of kit, and they're not approved for installation unless they are below a certain uh, level of decibels. So if, if, you, if you fancy, you can go onto YouTube. There's quite a few people that are now recording the, the sound of their SLC pumps. It, I know it's amazing. Um, and, um, and you can actually listen to a couple, but again, it's all relative. Um, but we, if you're really concerned, we know of heat pumps in and around the Wandsworth area that you could go and visit if you wanted to go and listen to one. Um, uh, isn't that fun? Uh, so um, you, you <laughs> do let us know if you've got those concerns. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's a valid, it's a valid thing, and uh, we're willing, willing to try and dispel any of those concerns. That's brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Um, there were some questions that also came in from people who signed up around um, what other um, funding sources are available if you're not eligible for this. And so I just wanted to kind of let people know about that. So, <clears throat> so one of them is that um, we do run our own sort of like um, energy efficiency um, scheme for those that are eligible, delivered by a, a, an organisation called Thinking Works. Um, so they will come in and do um, do sort of smaller scale energy efficiency measures and that aren't sort of on the sort of fabric side like, like we're talking about here. So it's more around sort of draft excluders, around putting sort of um, the foil things behind radiators to reflect it back in, um, thinking about um, energy efficient light bulbs, stuff like that to help you reduce your energy bills. Um, also, you can find a lot, of, a lot of this sort of information out online about things that you can do. So if you're keen to, to make some energy efficiency, um, so sort of do do some of that energy efficiency measures for yourself. Um, there is stuff on online, so um, we can uh, you can go to the the Wandsworth website and there's some information there, or um, the, there's um, the government um, simple energy advice uh, website, which you can go to, and it's got lots and lots of different resources. But yeah, um, and you can uh, combine greenhouse grant funding with other funding um, for sort of like. And that funding for the small things around energy efficiency and then also for sort of big things under greenhouse grants so you can combine them together and there's also the um, eco funding which is available from um, from the the energy companies as well so, so you can check if you're eligible for that um, and you can't really um, it's, it's a bit tricky to combine those two but it, it is possible so if, if you are eligible and you're interested in that let us know and we can have a look at that and, and see what what can be done there so there are other um are other other sort of avenues you can go down as well and uh, yeah my colleague bethany has just put a link uh, in the chat to our winter warmth home service i couldn't remember exactly what it was called but thank you very much bethany and uh hello to alex who's just joined us as well okay uh, i'm just looking at if there's um, are there any other questions that people might have? Um, please do put them in chat or raise your hand or just um, there's not a huge amount of people here. So if you just unmute yourself and ask away, if you're happy to do that, then, then please do so. Hi, Andrew. I'll be cheeky and jump in then. Hope you're well. Hi, Russell. Hi. How are you? Haven't seen you for a while. Uh, glad to see you're still with us. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out not only for the Winter Warmth programme that is focused on um, people in fuel poverty and particularly from the public health angle, but also for the project um, that Crew Energy are doing with um, in the Tooting residents for the Tooting Energy Advice Service, where we can give telephone based advice um around energy saving behaviors um dealing with energy debt um emergency prepayment 25 pound vouchers um understanding your bill better um all that kind of thing and that's a completely free and impartial friendly service from my lovely champions um and all people need to do to take advantage of that is there's a free phone number out or an email that people can send and I can 
pop that in the chat if that yeah, would be, be helpful. Great, yeah, no, love to. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, and and they do do excellent work. So um, yeah, thank you for for raising that and, and letting people know about it. It's that there's some some really it's a really good service. So um, yeah, thank thank you for, for highlighting that. Um, Carol, did you have a question? I saw you come off mute. Yeah, I I was wondering about the dra uh, things like draft excluding. I have got a badly fitted window, and also around my front door it. Even though I've got draft excluder there, it's still there's still a gap. Yeah, okay. um, it's uh, it's it, it, if hopefully we can conjure up some other things to go on top of that because that, that oh, probably, be, yeah, that, that would be a sh shameful waste of a lot of money. Um, because that we could do that quite relatively inexpensively, but I can assure you that will give you a lot of comfort, uh, benefit. Mm. We could, yeah, it, it's on, it's something we can do on the list. There's a whole other, other more juicy things we can do as well with your property as well. So um, if you apply, uh, we will do your assessment and we'll look at all the things that are possible and we won't forget your 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 draft stripping. OK, and what's your the name of your company again? Uh, Retrofit what's, Works. What, sorry? Retrofit Works. OK, thanks. Um, that's it for the moment, thanks. Fantastic, thank you very much, Carol. Um, and I'll share the love on because Andrew picked up myself and crew that um in a semi-incestuous way crew are also members of retrofit works and mm -hmm. they've got an excellent reputation so i'm happy to say i know they do good work and you can engage with them with clear conscience and no worry <laughs> that's great and uh my colleague bethany has put a link to, to retrofit works's web page in the chat as well so you can click through on that and and go and have a look at uh, some of the work that Retrofit works have done, and they've done loads of stuff sort of all around, sort of London and the southeast. Yep. Um. So yeah. Oh, and and Amy has put in the phone number as well, so that's in there as well. Fantastic. They are Russell. Um. So I think uh, just check if there's no more um other questions. If you have got them, let me know. If not, um, so a few people have dropped off now. Then we can quickly do the final interactive quiz. Um, so we thought this might be quite nice to, to, to do. So if you could go again to Slido. So um, Amy has just put a link in the chat. So if you head to Slido.com and enter the code WANDGHG, so that's W-A-N-D-G-H-G. Um, and yeah, and if you go there and you should be able to see some of the questions. We'll do a quick quiz. And we can see uh, whether people have, have listened to me or not. <laughs> um, there's also the uh, the QR code on the screen as well. So if you're using your phone, you've got a QR scanner, you can scan that on 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 the screen and you can go straight there. Um, so yeah, so um, here's the first question. So which two options are within the scheme's eligibility criteria? So which two of these are in the scheme's eligibility criteria? Is it a household income of 30,000 or less? If you live in a property with an EPC um, rating of A, B or C, you must be a landlord, or you live in a property with an EPC rating of D, E, F or G. So which of those two options are um, within the scheme's eligibility criteria? OK, so we'll give a, a few more. Just give a moment. OK, so we've got a few people have answered. So let's have a look at what people have said. Aha, fantastic. Yes. Uh, household income of 30,000 or less, that is correct. And live in a property with an EPC rating D, E, F or G. Fantastic, that's really good. Uh, and what's the next question? Uh, so which types of work can be carried out? Is it insulation only, solar panels only, fossil fuel heating systems such as gas boilers, air or ground source heat pumps, or energy any energy efficiency and heating measures compatible with the standard assessment procedure, so or SAP? 
So which types of these works can be carried out? OK. So we've got a few answers. Let's see. Air or ground source heat pumps came out 20% and 80% said energy, any energy efficiency and heating measures compatible with the standard assessment procedure or SAP. So let's see what was correct. It was that final one. So basically there's there's a, a, a technical um, sort of guide around what you can do around um, the, this SAP rating and basically anything that is compatible with that um, can be put in. So anything that improves energy efficiency under that rating can go in there. Which get, means that there's a huge range of different things that can be done. So it's not just sort of like a, a narrow sort of band of stuff. There's quite a wide range of, of things that can be done. So how can you apply for the scheme? Is it by post, by email, by an online application form or by phone? So which of these ways can you apply for the scheme? So we've got a few answers coming in. So how can you apply for the scheme? Uh, online application form, everyone said that. OK, and that was correct. Um, and you can, yeah, you can apply online. Uh, so how much funding could you receive? Could you get up to £5,000, up to £10,000 or up to £50,000? So how much funding could you receive? OK, we've had a few uh, answers. Up to £10,000 is the answer that everyone's put in. Let's see if that's correct. Yes, yes it is. So yeah, you can receive up to £10,000. In fact, actually, uh, it could be a touch over. So the, the, the funding that we've got has said that um, it should be £10,000 on average. So it might be that there's some that will be slightly below and some that will be slightly over, depending on the works that are there. So it's not a hard cap, um, but generally it'll be around about £10,000. Uh, and so just want to say that, that Russell needs to go now, um, but um, thank you very much, Russell, for coming along. Really appreciate it um, yes. and um, see you soon. And uh, Russell said, sort of, if there's any other questions, please do get in touch with, it, with him. OK, um, and that's it from us. Um, if uh, I hope this has been useful for you, I hope that um, that you know a lot more about the Green Homes Grant. And also, I really hope that you, if you're eligible, you really do apply. Um, it would be great to to have you on board uh, and to to make sure that we can double check that you're eligible and then get your details across to Russell and and his his crew at, at, uh, at Retrofit Works to, so they can do this whole home assessment, which in itself is is something that you'll get for free. That if you were going to pay for something like that probably cost you a couple hundred pounds to do. Um, so you'll get that for free and you can keep that. And that means that if you do want to do any any further work, you'll have that as the basis. And you'll know, to be honest, if somebody is coming along and trying to uh, sell you stuff that's not going to be as effective, you'll have that already there. Um, so that that's a super useful thing in and of itself. Um, and then obviously you can have some work done on your home up to around about 10,000 um, pounds. So yeah, check that you're eligible, send us an application, application form and um, and we can get things going. So thank you very much. Uh, really good to see you and um, uh, yeah, have a great evening. Thank you very much all. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome.